So I've gotten a couple of questions from some people who want to come to study in Canada, but they don't know how to choose the right school. Now, if this is you, this video is for you. Or if you know anybody that needs this information, please make sure that you share this video with them. Stick around. Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Faith, I'm an HR professional and event host based in Toronto, Canada. If you are just seeing this face for the first time, you are welcome. Please make sure that you use that subscribe button and also click on the notification bell so when I post a new video, you will be the first to know. And to my OGs in the house, you guys simply rock. So let's dive right into it. I don't know what sort of school I should go to in Canada, but I know that I want to come to study in Canada. How can you help? What are the tips that you can offer? First thing I would say is that, of course, you need to know your course of study, right? Because that will ultimately guide your decision because there are certain programs that are not offered by all universities, right? If it's a specialized sort of program, then you might find maybe one or two universities offering it and then you might not really have a choice because your options are limited. But if it's a standard program, then you would have loads of options. So I think the first thing is just do a Google search and say, oh, I'm coming to study, I don't know, human resources and see all the universities that will come out. Of course, you would have a long list. Maybe you want to, so from there, you can now start narrowing it down. And I think that you should start looking at things like, okay, what is the intake like? in the school like what are the what is the admission um timeline like there are some schools that maybe you can join twice a year some you can join just once so you need to factor in those things if you're someone that is looking to join in january you need to make sure that you the school that you are trying to um, look at has a january intake for students you also need to look at the requirements for instance if you are someone who doesn't want to do ielts <laughs> then you need to just use that as a um as a factor to screen out universities so you'll be looking at schools on that list that do not require ielts as part of their requirements okay so you can narrow it down from there now when you have looked at it that way you can now start looking at your finances and i'll tie that to the the province that you are coming into of course a lot of factors will determine where you want to end up in in terms of your province but i think that one of the major factors will be the cost of living right naturally there are provinces that have a higher cost of living than others um provinces like ontario cities like toronto to be precise it costs a lot of money right you know uh, vancouver ha has that as well so you want to look at um provinces that maybe you know don't cost so much so maybe you i don't want to mention the other provinces but just look at it that way but the major ones i've mentioned now are the ones that are really expensive so because you need to look at um the bills that you're going to be getting accommodation is one very uh, huge bill that you know you would need to factor in into your calculations so if you want to live in downtown Toronto, for instance, it is very expensive. That's where a lot of your money will be going into. So just think about things like that. Aside just looking at the cost of your, um, of your program, because that is important as well. Can you afford the school? Let's start from there. And then can you afford the location where the school is? So you just need to look at them hand in hand and see if it makes sense to you. Another thing I would chip in here is that you, you want to look at maybe a province where you know a lot of people, or at least you have family and friends, because more like as bad as he bad, if you know one person there, at least there's still somebody that you can fall back on, or maybe someone that you can live with right so or someone that can help you offset some of your bills or your costs right so that is something that you might need to factor in now one of the other things i will talk about is looking beyond the classroom walls right looking at what is life like outside you know the university you know outside my my schooling experience if you're someone that likes you know upbeat fast-paced sort of cities and all that fine maybe you can look at schools that are in more upbeat cities right because 
especially uh, and i'll tie this to the last point i mentioned which is where you have family and friends especially if you don't know anybody <laughs> it can be quite depressing if you are the only one in in a particular area right so you might want to be in i don't know a city where at least you are seeing people on a regular but if you are just the only one you don't know anybody and then you not end up in one you know small city in canada because that's where your school is you might not really want to do that because you, you, you know, I don't want you to be depressed, <laughs> you right? Because loneliness can, you know, can be hard. So you need to sort of factor in those sort of things. Like what, what's your personality type? If you're someone that doesn't mind, you know, you're happy to just be in a quiet place, just doing your thing, going about your business, then that's okay. Otherwise, if you're on the other side of the spectrum and you like, you know, city life, hustle and bustle, then you need to sort of factor those things in. Because yes, you're coming to Canada to school, but at the end of the day, you know, there's still life outside the classroom walls, right? So you need to sort of look at things like that. Another thing I'll chip in here is look at um, um, where you can readily find jobs. It's no longer news that you can work for more than 20 hours a week now as a Canadian, as, as someone who is studying in Canada. Before, it, there used to be that cap of 20 hours, but now you can work up to 40 hours weekly, I think, for most programs, right? So you want to look at a province that sort of offers, you know, where the opportunity to get jobs are higher. Don't go to one village or then you will now be suffering because you cannot even pay your school fees because you can't get a job. So I think all these points I'm mentioning, you can't just pick one in isolation of the others. You sort of have to just, you know, do like, you, you have to look at them in tandem, right? Because that's when it will make sense. Because yes, looking for jobs are important, landing jobs are important, but that might not be the only factor. The school might be so expensive in the city that readily has the jobs. So it's just about you know, sort of placing them side by side and seeing what works. But these are just things that I'm saying so that it can get you thinking. The other thing I'll mention here is the size of the school or the size of classroom. Now, this may not be so important to some people, but some people are concerned about, oh, I want a small, um, you know, I want a school that has like a small classroom where, you know, I can have access to my professor. Professors here are called are the lecturers as we know them back in Nigeria or, you know, more in Africa. So, you know, I want to have access to my professor. So I want a small class, you know, my personality type. I don't like a very large class. So things like that, you might want to factor it in because some universities are so big that there are so many people in the class. You might not get the attention that you readily, des that you, you know, you think you deserve. So all of those things might play a part in helping you decide. Now, one thing I would say here is that Another factor that can help you decide is talking to people, ask questions, join forums. There are forums on maybe LinkedIn, on, on WhatsApp, you know, there are on Facebook, there are groups of uh, that, that, you know, of people that are already studying the program that you're coming to study. You need to ask questions. There's nothing like having that one-on-one -on -one, um, information accessible to you. So ask them questions, ask them how is life in that school, things like that, so that you can get a sense of what you're getting into. Also check online, you know, on Google, check for the reviews on the particular university, check for the reviews on the particular course that you, or the program that you're coming to study. Even though this might not really matter because I think that on the average, schools are typically standard here, but hey, it's something to still look out for, right? And just ask about life in general, how are things there, so that you know that, okay, this is what I'm coming, this is what I'm getting into. Then I think finally, if you wanna be too, if you wanna be very particular, you might also want to look at the ranking of the university. Now, some schools are ranked very high. If you're someone who is concerned about, you know, I want my school, I want to study in the top five schools, right? Because you think that it will naturally boost your, um, you know, the, boost your resume and, you know, make you learn jobs faster than the others. Well, I don't know. I don't know that it necessarily changes much. Yes, there are some schools that are very prestigious. It's like going to Harvard in, in, in the United States, right? Like everybody knows that, okay, you know, it sort of gives you an edge. So yes, we might have that in Canada, maybe the U of T's and the likes. But for me, it might not really matter. I think this one is more of a personal choice, right? And it's more of looking at the other factors I talked about, because what's the point of going to a prestigious school that you cannot afford, that you don't have anybody in the city and you're lonely? Like, just look at it hand in hand, and then you'll be able to figure out where what makes sense for you. Then I think finally, and this one is very, very important, 
as you're narrowing down your school, make sure that the universities that you end up, maybe look at your top three, right? And make sure that you check them on the list of the designated um, learning institutions in Canada. I'm going to drop a link to that in the description box. So make sure you check it out. Because what's the point of choosing a school when the school is not a designated learning institution? It, it can't, like, if it's not on that list, then don't even bother applying to it, okay? Don't bother applying. Another thing that you should check while you're checking that list as well is to check that that particular school offers a, a postgraduate work permit because let's not lie we're not coming to canada to just school and go back i mean some people might be doing that and if that's your cup of tea then this part of the video is not for you but if you're someone whose ultimate goal is to stay in canada then you need to check that that particular university offers postgraduate work permit meaning you can work after you are done with your school and ultimately stay in Canada after school. Okay, so I will put that link in the description box. Make sure that you check it out. So guys, those are some of the tips that I have for you. If you know any other tips, um, let's help people out. Please add them in the comment section. And if there are things that you want me to talk about, um, videos that you want me to do, please let me know. You know, it's always very helpful when we can bounce off ideas. And please use the like button. Don't be stingy. Like this video, please. <laughs> Use that like button and also share. I think it's very important. This information might not be for you, but share it in forums that you belong to, groups that you belong to. You don't know who it might bless. So this is where I'm going to leave this video for now. I will see you on the next one. Bye.